Hello beautiful people, not gonna lie, left shooting this week's episode a little bit late and by a little bit late I mean oh sh** god f what have I done. No time to reshoot anything so basically gonna have to one take the whole thing and pray to god that I don't see anything too incriminating like f but And I haven't even got the excuse that I'm hungover this week either just just all of the phones basically all at the same time as usual so anyway that's enough of an intro jingle me expert weekly so those tasty pixel 6a rumors are gathering serious momentum now that we're possibly only weeks away from the launch in fact you can expect to see this delicious mid-range mobile spaffed out on stage on may the 11th when google io finally kicks off and you may be wondering why I'm using adjectives like tasty and delicious. That's just because I haven't had any breakfast yet, so all I can think about is eggs and bacon and fried toast, so just ignore that, moving on. OnLeaks has already shared potentially accurate renders of this 6.2 inch blower, which seems legit. You've got a design unsurprisingly similar to the Google flagships, just like previous Pixel A handsets, complete with a wide boy camera housing and an OLED display filling most of that front end, complete with a built-in fingerprint sensor. And there is evidence in some of the source code that people were digging around in that Google is still working on a low power face recognition mode as well. It could make its debut for the Pixel 6 here, but it's highly unlikely, much more likely to pop up for the Pixel 7s. So until then, just got to remember to completely dry your hands every time you go to the bogs, otherwise you'll be furiously typing in your pin instead. Meanwhile, that arse end is apparently still constructed from glass, but in a similar move to Samsung with its latest A53 phone, it looks like Google has cruelly killed off the headphone jack. Those dastardly fiends. However, most of the recent rumors have actually been good news. So for instance, there was lots of talk uh, just a couple of months ago about the Google Pixel 6a probably not using Google's Tensor chipset, the one that's stuffed inside of those flagships. However, recent web whisperings do suggest that the Pixel 6a will indeed be running off that Tensor chipset. And on top of that, we could see the very same 50 meg Samsung GN1 camera sensor stuffed into the Pixel 6a, which when combined with the Tensor should mean spooge-worthy photos at day and night. But then of course on the flip side, if we've got that Google Tensor chipset, if we've got the same primary camera setup, well, what is Google actually cutting in order to bring down that price? So you can expect the Pixel 6 here to cost a pretty penny. We're probably talking at least 400, 450 minimum. So if all this web bollocks is true, then don't expect it to be much cheaper than the flagship. But of course, as usual, even if the Pixel 6 here does launch in about a month's time, probably won't actually be released here in Blighty for another couple of months. So plenty of time to plan lots of visits to your grands to gradually siphon money off out of a handbag. Now this week, the big tech woo-ha was when Xiaomi launched its latest round of budget blowers, including the Redmi Note 11 Pro Plus 5G. The name is an absolute friggin' horror show, but this is an upgraded version of the Note 11 Pro, serving up insanely quick 120 watt fast charging support. However, on the flip side, that battery size has now shrunk a bit so it doesn't last quite as long. So it's like that age-old question that's often whipped out at hen parties. Would you rather shag Brad Pitt if he had a tiny knob, or Matt Hancock packing a serious horse schlong between his legs? And for the record, the correct answer, apparently in Sunderland at least, appears to be both at the same time, please. The rest of the 11 Pro Plus's specs are mostly familiar with the same screen text, storage, etc. as the 11 Pro, although it's MediaTek's Dimensity 920 now running the show rather than a Snapdragon 695, while the camera results are slightly different despite both phones sharing the same sensor. The Pro Plus hits stores on April the 6th for $359, probably about the same in pounds. And if you're utterly bewildered by everything what I just said, you can see my full Redmi Note 11 versus Pro versus Pro Plus comparison right here on Techspert, you lucky buggers. Hooray! Xiaomi also revealed two other cheaper 5G blowers at the launch in case you already spent all of your phone money on cheap liquor and floozies. The Redmi Note 11 S 5G starts from $249 and packs a Dimensity 810, you've got 5000 milliamp battery and 50 meg primary camera. Or for just $199, you can have a Redmi 10 5G, which sports the Dimensity 700, plus another 5,000 milliamp battery and 50 meg camera. So that's all the Xiaomi news for this week, thank God. But stay tuned, because next week we'll probably get the Redmi Note 11 Pro Plus Billy Big Bollocks Ultra Motherfucker, which can beat up other smartphones on demand and sound a warning if you're about to accidentally swap to a telly channel with Mrs. Brown's Boys or James Cockboy Corden on it. And also this week, OnePlus finally decided to launch its latest flagship phone outside of China. The OnePlus 10 Pro holds no surprises to anyone who actually bothered to look up the specs in the many months since it was first unveiled, but if you'd like to see lots of shots of it clutched in my pasty hand with the occasional knob gag thrown in for good measure, well, my unboxing is live right now. 
So now it's time, regrettably, for the part of the show that's best served with at least several pints of white light, and it's viewer comments. Viewer comments. Okay, Azam is kicking us off this week. Uh, he says, not a single video without the word shenanigans. That's consistency. Yeah, in fact, if you want a fun game to play along at home, fun, <laughs> like anyone has any fun at this show, uh, what you basically need to do is, you've got nine words right here, just neck your pint every time I say one of them, and if you scratch off all of them, then basically smash back an entire bottle of Drambuie. And there you have it, instant fun, because you'll be too unconscious to actually watch this show. Our next up, Saw says, are you the lost brother of Bear Grylls? I mean, I don't drink my own piss, if that's what you're asking. Got to admit, unlike Bear, I'm definitely very much not an outdoorsy kind of person. Quite happy here in my garage where no wildlife and nature can actually get to me. You know, if I ever went camping on Wimbledon Common, for instance, it would probably just end with me being fished out of a lake, naked and bleeding and screaming in terror with half the woods burned down around me. But hey, like wild unboxings, that could be a thing. You know, maybe when I'm feeling a bit more adventurous, I could, you know, be dangling off a cliff, pulling the Galaxy S36 out of the box or something. Like that's the kind of shit that YouTube would go wild for, right? And next up, Ewan says, Hi Uncle Spurt, you need to watch Meat Canyon's video on James Corden. It's incredible. Okay, no idea who Meat Canyon is, so just type in this bad boy into Google. Looks like another YouTube guy. I love this. You've got the uh, the actual video, top, top of the search list, of course, and then the next 10 videos are just reactions to that video. And even the reaction videos get more hits than pretty much any of my videos ever do. So here we go. Here's my reaction video to Meat Canyon. You know, all of the clicks. Yeah, he said Minge. Good word. And pretty much nailed his deeply irritated voice. And it ends with him dying horribly, so uh, definitely gets bonus points for that. So overall, pretty good. Only bad thing was it reminded me that James Corden exists. Uh, so a few demerits for that one, but otherwise, yeah. Uh, next up, Ayo Cutmore says, Uncle Spurt, the only tech YouTuber that both me, a uni student, and my dad can relate to. Me for the hangovers and him for the awareness of his middle-agedness. Yeah, definitely make the most of your youthfulness, Lado, that's for sure. The best advice I can ever impart because reality is lurking just around the corner ready to give you a swift belt in the nads as soon as you hit 35. You know, bad back, bad knees, the hangovers. Oh my God, the hangovers. You'll literally have two shandies and the next day it feels like Satan and all of his many minions are skull f***ing you to death. And also enjoy being able to sleep for the entire night without having to get up at least once for an awkward piss. I tell you, these days I'm just looking forward to when I can finally get a bloody catheter installed. Uh, anyway, moving on, EVG Katsujin Ken says, A Filipino breakfast goes well with a hangover. Once again, I'm going to have to Google this, unfortunately, because I've got no idea. I love how I've got lots of comments that require Googling on the friggin' day that I've, I've got absolutely no time to do anything. Ooh, ooh, oh man, I, I was hungry before and now I'm, oh my god, my mouth is about to gush. I mean, it basically looks like a British fry up, except with those awesome little uh, mini, really salty sausages you often get in the continental breakfasts when you go on holiday in Europe. And it uh, looks like fried rice as well. Oh. And apparently these dishes require only minimal cooking skills, according to good old Google. So yeah, I'm sold. Uh, Paul, also on the subject of food, says, try salad cream on a fish finger butty. Absolutely ace. Yes. I'm, I'm really liking this, actually. This is kind of like MasterChef, but for greasy snacks. And I'm also loving how, again, I'm getting all these food comments when I'm having a bloody breakfast. Uh, it looks like a lot of people are perturbed by the Realme GT Neo 3's 150 watt fast charge and basically worried it might cause the battery to f*** up or for the phone to actually spontaneously combust. All except for David, that is, who says, only 150 watts, I'm still waiting for the 350 watt charging. Now, touch wood, the whole fast charging shouldn't really be an issue. Uh, they've got so many, you know, hardware and software fail safes on board now so to make sure that, the, you know, the battery hits capacity and then stops charging. You know, it's generally like a trickle charge for the final 10% or whatever. Uh, the only way it could be knackering your battery is if you're regularly letting your phone drain to 0% and then charging it from, from dead, basically. Otherwise, yeah, I have noticed with the fast charging, sometimes if you are charging a completely dead phone, usually by the time it's been plugged in for about 10 minutes or so, it tends to get hotter than a inside of a Ginster's pasty after 10 minutes in the microwave, i.e. hot enough to melt through any substance on Earth, including diamond. And next up, George says, I doubt the nothing phone, open brackets, one, close brackets, will be any more exciting than the ones we have right now. 
Yeah, 100% with you on that one. I reckon it'll be a victim of the hype machine, frankly, and all this teasing before the official launch is even a thing. I reckon it'll be a perfectly serviceable form with a mostly stock Android experience, just that nothing skin slapped on top. It'll probably be pretty good value overall, basically something similar to the original OnePlus One. Uh, Will says, do you still get excited about phone launches? Is there a particular one you are looking forward to? Well, yeah, now that launches are actually happening again in real life rather than on f***ing YouTube or Zoom, then yeah, I am actually getting <laughs> rather excited about phone launches again, especially the ones with the free bar and canopies. Uncle Spurt is definitely all about the prone volivons. Got to admit though, I have been uh, reviewing phones for well over a decade now, about 12, 13 years, something like that. And yeah, phone launches aren't quite as exciting now as they were back then, partly because I was like a fresh-faced youth, all full of wonder and jizz and whatever else. Well, sp spunk and vinegar, that's the expression, isn't it? Zero HTC was launching a new bat mental form basically every week, pretty much. They were the Motorola of uh, back in the day. Uh, you know, LG crazy stuff. You had bonkers phones like the Nokia N-Gage, that Sony Xperia gaming phone. Whereas now it kind of feels like most phones are kind of very similar to each other. You haven't got much evolution going on beyond, you know, slightly bigger batteries, slightly better cameras, slightly faster charging batteries, of course. But, you know, I'll sit there with my Heineken and my prone Volivons and I'll, I'll be happy enough. Um, oh, bollocks, I haven't actually answered the bit of your question about what phone launches are you looking forward to. Um, so it does kind of feel like all of the phone launches have happened in the past couple of weeks. Uh, but we've still got the Sony Xperia 1 Mark IV on the horizon, so hopefully we'll get some good stuff out of that. Sony will iron out all the wrinkles from the Mark III. Uh, Pixel 6a, of course, looking forward to seeing what Google can do with a mid-range mobile in 2022. And naturally, I'm looking forward to about uh, 20 more Xiaomi and Motorola phones coming in the next month. And I don't think I've said shenanigans yet, have I, for, for the people playing the, the Techspert bingo? Shenanigans, yeah, mum. Uh, Bruno says, hello, Uncle Spurt. Sorry for the tech-related question. That's right, Bruno, I'll forgive you this once. Do you know why Xiaomi are so slow on their updates and will this change in the future? I get the feeling the answer is much like Motorola and other manufacturers who are kind of known for their tardy updates. The fact that they've got so many bloody phones. Although having said that, Samsung churn them out pretty uh, pretty regularly as well and still manage to keep on top of it pretty well. So clearly they're just a bit more dedicated to it. Will it change in the future? Well, I think a lot of manufacturers are now at the very least realising they need to offer at least a couple of years of security and OS updates in order for people to not get cross at them. And sustainability is a big frigging keyword these days literally and also just in general and uh, I think it's you know important that people keep their phones for a bit longer than just you know replacing them every six months if all these we don't completely f up the environment and I'm just rambling now frankly I, mean, I don't really care because I'll probably be dead in about six months anyway but uh, yeah be, be be kind to each other what what, what the f was the question again uh, we got people asking for reviews the OnePlus Nord 2 CE 5G and the Xiaomi 12 <laughs> there's, just, there's just been so many phones I'm really sorry uh, that I haven't got around to reviewing all of them unfortunately Xiaomi 12 I am actually working on it I am still using it on and off as my full-time phone in between other stuff that I'm working on um, so stay tuned for that the TLDR version version is basically better battery life, more compact than the Pro, so I actually prefer it. Uh, the OnePlus Nord CE2 5G uh, didn't unfortunately manage to get around to shoot a video review of that, despite the fact I used it as my full-time phone for a few days. So again, TLDR version. The newfangled Oxygen OS has been behaving itself, despite the fact it kind of feels like it's lost its identity a little bit. If you are a media fan, well, gorgeous OLED panel and everything on that, so job done. Performance has been absolutely all right. Uh, battery life, solid. Haven't struggled to make it through a full day. Camera tech fine as long as you're not trying to shoot in like low light or strong HDR situations and it is still running on Android 11 which sucks monkey nuts so there you go that's my 30 second review of the OnePlus Nord CE2 5G. Uh, Matt says I've got I'm losing my voice gonna really uh, make this uh, last couple of comments. Uh, Chris since you're a notable star in quotation marks uh, do you ever get recognized out in public? Uh, yes occasionally I do very occasionally um, and it's usually when I'm like hungover knackered and just generally bewildered by life life which to be fair is my natural state 90% of the time so all they get in response to their oh you're that bold twat off YouTube aren't you is a wah ha wah wah uh, Neil says, my OnePlus 8 Pro just got Android 12 and I don't like it, I don't like it at all. Sigh. Also, my favourite turtle was Donatello, who, like Uncle Spurt, does machines. Yeah, he was always my favourite of the bunch. That, that Good old Donny, love him. Um, as, as for doing machines, I, I do review phones and stuff, but in terms of actually fixing stuff like Donatello, sh I luck there, because basically, I, even though I did several years of tech support back in the day, 
Literally, if the whole switch it off, switch it on trick doesn't work, then I'm f it if I know what's going on. And last up for the week, Etienne says, Too much phone chat in this week's Ninja Turtles, 80s movies and booze spurt weekly. Yeah, we haven't chatted 80s flicks in a while, actually. That is that is a good point. Uh, I've been on a, a bit of a classic vampire 80s flicks kind of bender recently. It's been uh, smash about like some vamp, Fright Night and Fright Night Part 2, classics, Lost Boys, you know, stuff like that. Um, so, yeah, if, has anyone got any other recommendations for sort of cheesy old vampire flicks um because yeah really really enjoying those at the moment for some reason at 2 a.m after i've you know spent all day shooting phone videos and just constantly i was salem's lot as well which i think that's probably more like late 70s than actually 80s but i uh, used to scare the living shit out of me as a kid like i literally i could not open my curtains for about six months after watching that thing anyway thank you thank you thank you so much to everyone who commented last week massive apologies we only managed to get through a fraction of them really running low on time this week i don't know what's going on uh, as i say not not even drinking at the moment literally just working and watching the uh, the old the old vampire flex but stay tuned lots of stuff coming at you so next week next week what the f is next week i don't even bloody know uh samsung galaxy a53 unboxing will hopefully be with you guys over the weekend got a new blade 17 laptop coming in uh, got lots of phones to cover maybe at some point i'll say hello to the people who live with me in this house and uh, and also get some sleep that'll be good but as always i appreciate you crazy bastards who who watch this stuff to the very end and uh if you haven't actually joined the spurt army yet please do pop subscribe ding that notifications bell and everybody have yourselves a fan bloody tastic weekend cheers everyone love you